training of trainers, resources, and strategies. We apologize for a slight delay in uh, beginning the webinar. I am Sanya Bebic, uh, Director of the Course Center at the Center for Applied Linguistics, and I am joined today for the majority of this presentation by my colleague Danny Abrams, who um, was the main author of the CO Training of Trainers Guide that we will spend the majority of time uh, talking about today. This webinar builds on other web webinars we previously delivered on tools and resources to support effective design and delivery of cultural orientation for refugees, and I will just do a quick recap and refresher uh, on those resources before we move on to talk about the training of trainers um, guide and video, which we also developed um, this uh, last year and, and this year as a companion to the, the COTOT guide. So um, as uh, many of you who have accompanied us on, on this journey, um, over the past several years, no, we started with the development of um, overseas and reception and placement orientation objectives and indicators, and then those were reflected in the new editions of the Welcome to the United States uh, book and video a few years ago. From there, we moved on to develop the reception and placement um, cultural orientation curriculum, Making Your Way. Um, and um, at the same time started to work on assessment tools for um, or cultural, refugee cultural orientation. Uh, we will do a webinar on uh, specifically on some of the new and revised assessment tools for both overseas and domestic orientation um, on Thursday, uh, February 26th, and hopefully many of you will join us for that. Um, the latest set of, of tools to support uh, effective design and delivery of refugee cultural orientation um, that we worked on um, last year and finishing up early this year is the Training of Trainers guide um, and video. With that, I will turn it over to Danny and I will come back later to say uh, a little bit more about the TOT video. Danny? Thanks, Sonia. Um, so Refugee Training and Orientation, a guide for service providers, has been developed to help service providers who work with refugees overseas or domestically. My name is Danny Abrams, and I author the, training, the Refugee Training and Orientation Guide. I will refer to this as the TOT Guide for most of this webinar to make it a little shorter. So first I'll talk about who this is for. The TOT Guide has been designed for trainers or case workers or managers who deliver orientation directly, supervisors or training coordinators who are in charge of designing a program or in training staff, as well as others such as resettle additional resettlement support staff, other service providers, and community members who also participate in familiarizing refugees with aspects of life in the United States. Please use the raise your hand function if you are one of these people. Please raise your hand if you're a colleague of one of these people. All right, it's, that, it's great to see that the TOT guide is applicable to most people on this webinar. While the majority of the content is most relevant for individuals who deliver training and orientation, there is valuable information throughout the guide that applies to all audiences. For orientation, there is valuable information throughout the guide. Oh, I'm sorry. For example, the background information on Chapter 1 on getting, orient, on getting Oriented is useful for all individuals who work with refugees and orientation programs. The section on developing trainers in Chapter 4, um, in, which focuses on both developing trainers and partnerships, may be particularly useful for lead trainers and supervisors. Volunteers and community members may gain helpful insights on developing partnerships and community involvement from, other, from another section in that same chapter. Ideally, users will become familiar with all the content, assess various sections and tools as needed, 
and later revisit the guide to reflect on their experiences and their development over time. First, I would like to start. I would like to start with talking about the Getting Started Guide. Please raise your hand if you have looked at the Getting Started Guide. It's great to see that the majority of people on this webinar have taken this first step. This two-page document has been designed to help you approach the Refugee Training and Orientation Guide and make use of it most easily. We recommend that you review the Getting Started document, then look through the full guide for the the full TOT guide for the information and resources most useful for your program on topics such as conducting needs assessments, providing training to diverse groups of people and those with special needs, incorporating various methods into orientation sessions, and more. In general, we recommend that users follow these steps when getting started with the TOT guide. <clears throat> and this little chart, this little chart is also at the bottom of the getting started guide on the first page, as well as found in the TOT guide itself. First, we ask that users review the content of the guide and familiarize themselves with it. Second, we ask that users identify and review the sections that are most applicable to their programs. Third, we encourage you to implement some of the techniques into your own practices and reflect on these applications. And finally, please take some time to read through the rest of the guide. We encourage you to revisit the reflective and interactive components and continue to reflect on your own training practices. Sorry, quick sip of water there. So now we're ready to get started with the TOT guide. <clears throat> this guide has been developed to enhance users' understanding, design, and delivery of training and orientation. Please use the raise your hand function if you have looked at the TOT guide. It's good to see that a number of people on this webinar have taken the opportunity to look at the guide itself. Maybe not as many as the Getting Started Guide, but I do hope that this webinar will help encourage people find to encourage people to find some time to look through the guide itself. Mm -hmm. If you have access to it, I encourage you to have the Refugee Training and Orientation Guide open in front of you during this webinar. If you don't have a hard copy, here's a link at the bottom of the screen here to download it from the Core Center website. This way, you can look at different parts of the guide as I refer to them. Now I will talk about the layout of the guide. The guide contains the following elements. An introduction with information about the development of the guide and how to use it. Chapter 1 on getting oriented, the foundations of refugee orientation and training. Chapter 2 on planning a refugee or planning a training program. <clears throat> Chapter 3 on training, delivery, and assessment, focusing on methods, materials, tips, and tools. And chapter 4 developing trainers and partnerships. There are also three appendices. Appendix A provides a list of the training strategies discussed throughout the manual and page numbers on where to find them. Appendix B includes handouts and worksheets to complement information provided in the guide. And Appendix C has a list of selected resources to topics discussed in the various chapters. <clears throat> Now I will talk about things that each chapter has. Each chapter starts off with a set of critical questions that will be answered upon completion of the chapter that users can revisit. This revisit can happen before and after reading a chapter, and in the future as well, to revise responses and think about how training experiences and beliefs have changed over time. You can also use these questions to identify what key information is found in each chapter. Each chapter incorporates a variety of reflective and interactive components for users highlighted in a teal text so they can easily be spotted, including critical incidents displaying common challenges in training with reflective questions for you to consider. For example, after discussing knowledge, skills, and attitudes as important aspects of training, here is a reflective piece for users to consider. Each chapter provides speech bubbles which provides simplified questions in the margins for the, answer, for the answers that are addressed in the section. For example, here is a speech bubble, which gives a simple question that is discussed in the section on assessment and reflection following a training session or program. 
Each chapter includes icons to help users identify reflection pieces, training strategies, where simple handouts and worksheets from Appendix B are related, and when additional resources related to a certain topic are provided in Appendix B. You can see one of the icons that we have used in the reflection example here with the knowledge, skills, and attitude circles at the top of the screen on the right-hand side. <clears throat> Each chapter incorporates quotes from trainers and supervisors in the field to emphasize key points or provide examples that others before you have used. For example, here is a short quote about working with diverse groups of participants, and as you can see, it is incorporated into the text where, um, where it matches the topic. Now I will talk a little bit about the contents of the four chapters. Chapter 1 is about getting oriented and the foundations of refugee orientation and training. This chapter provides basic information on the approach, philosophy, and process of orientation and training, including an explanation of the knowledge, skills, and attitudes framework. The chapter introduces adult and learner-centered training theories and strategies. It also addresses the importance of cultural awareness and cross-cultural communication. The chapter introduces key concepts and terms commonly used in refugee resettlement. It discusses knowledge, skills, and attitudes, the focus of training that trainers and participants should have. The chapter talks about developing cultural awareness and cross-cultural communication, and it addresses the principles of learning and training. Chapter 2 focuses on the steps to planning a training program. This chapter outlines the various components of planning, designing, and scheduling a training. It provides considerations for needs assessments, defining goals and objectives, outlining a training, setting up a training space, and coordinating logistics. In short, Chapter 2 shares what the planning process should look like, discusses the importance, uses, and types of needs assessments, talks about planning the content and methods of the training, provides considerations on developing a learner assessment plan, and includes details on organizing logistics, training space, materials, and equipment. Chapter 3 is about training, delivery, and assessment, and focuses on the methods, materials, to tips, and tools of training and orientation. <clears throat> this is a how-to section with numerous strategies and methods that trainers can use in designing and facilitating training sessions. The chapter includes information on creating positive learning environments, effective communication, identifying resources, and an extensive list of training and facilitation methods. This chapter also includes pointers on learner assessment and working effectively with different types of participants, groups, co-trainers, and interpreters. In summary, Chapter 3 discusses the importance of creating positive learning environments, shares information about training resources, materials, and methods, talks about training and facilitation for individuals, groups, and diverse participant needs, including co-training and working with interpreters, includes a section on alternative delivery methods such as in the car or resource center, in the waiting room or community, online, the blended learning of a classroom and online structure, and joint orientation with other service providers in the area. Chapter 3 finally also discusses steps to take after a training to encompass assessment and reflection. Chapter 4 is about developing trainers and partnerships. This chapter explores the ongoing development of trainers and provides strategies for developing trainer skills. Additionally, it provides some considerations for developing partnerships and broadening community involvement and orientation. The first section is on developing trainers. This includes the qualities and characteristics of an effective trainer, developing trainer self-awareness, trainer self-reflection after a training, providing training for trainers, and evaluating trainers by providing observations, feedback, and trainer self-assessment. The second section is on developing partnerships and community involvement. This includes partnering with community members, the benefits of including community members in orientation, and different types of partnerships to build, and considerations in developing these partnerships and relationships. 
There are many different ways to use the TOT guide. The design of the chapters was developed with the idea that trainers could read the guide front to back. However, many will not have that time. As outlined earlier when I discussed the Getting Started Guide, trainers should review the contents of the guide and identify sections that are most applicable to individual and programmatic needs. Trainers should then implement some techniques on their own practices and, when time allows, read through the rest of the guide, revisiting the reflective and interactive components and continuing to reflect on training practices. Now I will discuss some examples of how this guide can be useful to people with different needs. Here are three examples that I will discuss during this webinar. The first situation is of a case manager who also serves as a trainer who is feeling overwhelmed by the idea of delivering interactive orientation. The second scenario is about a program which has participants of varying ages from two cultural groups. And the third example is of a situation where ethnic tensions arise in several training sessions. Please use the raise your hand function if the first example here applies to you or your program. Please raise your hand if the second applies to you or your program. And please raise your hand if the third example about ethnic, tension, ethnic tensions applies to your program. So now we'll consider the first example. A case manager who also serves as a trainer feels overwhelmed by the idea of delivering interactive orientation. Take a moment to think about what you would need to know if you were in this situation. You can write some ideas into the question box. Here are some things that a trainer might want to pay close attention to within the TOT guide if they were faced with a situation such as this. A trainer might consider new methods and activities, which are found on page 111 of the TOT guide. A trainer could prioritize topics by delivering an effective and efficient needs assessment, found on page 63. A trainer might review information about classroom management, found on page 99. A trainer could consider effective use of time in relation to the duration and frequency of sessions discussed on page 76. And a trainer could learn more about working with volunteers and guest speakers found on page 203 of the TOT guide. Now let's consider the second scenario. A program includes participants of varying ages from two cultural groups. Again, take a moment to think about what you would like to do, what, what, what you would need to know if you were in this situation. And again, you can write some of these ideas into the questions box. Thank you for some of these great ideas. Here are, some here are some other things that a trainer might want to pay close attention to within the TOT guide. <clears throat> a trainer could review the section on working with diverse groups found on page 143 of the TOT guide. A trainer might select and incorporate icebreakers to help participants get to know each other with more information on page 114. A trainer should strive to create a safe space for learning and would find more about this tactic on page 99 of the guide. And finally, a trainer might review strategies on grouping and considerations on working with an interpreter, found on pages 82 and 171, respectively. <clears throat> finally, let's consider the third scenario that I outlined, ethnic tensions that have come up in several training sessions. Take a moment to think about what you would need to know if you were in this situation. Please write some ideas into the questions box.
All right, thanks for your ideas. A couple of thoughts here about some things that a trainer might want to pay close attention to within the TOT guide. A trainer and staff should consider the cultural awareness scenarios during the staff meeting, which start on page 29 of the guide. And a trainer might review best practices in working with diverse groups and difficult participants, found on pages 143 and 159 of the TOT guide. More examples of when and how to, um, to use the guide in specific situations are discussed on pages 12 and 13 of the guide. Finally, I want to introduce you all to the TOT workbook that Cal is currently developing. The workbook is being developed as a tool for trainers with key information about training and useful handouts, worksheets, and checklists from Appendix B of the TOT guide. The majority of the content displayed in the workbook comes directly from the TOT guide. The workbook will be about 60 pages in length, so about 30 pages when printed double-sided, and is based on the TOT workbook table of contents recommended on page 218 from Appendix B of the TOT guide. This tool will be available from our website in the upcoming weeks. I thank you for taking part in this webinar today. I look forward to your questions. I will now hand this back over to Sonia, who will talk about the TOT video. Thank you, Danny. So as I mentioned in the beginning, another product we um, worked on last year with the help uh, with many of you who hosted us for the filming of the Training of Trainers video, it is, um, is the CO Training of Trainers video called um, Cultural Orientation and Introduction for Trainers. The audience that this was developed for is trainers, facilitators, um, that is those who provide cultural orientation directly, whether overseas or, or domestically. Um, others who provide orientation, such as community partners, uh, volunteers, interns, etc. And the intended use for the video is twofold, um, and there will be others, I'm sure, as you all begin to use and implement the, the use of the video in your programs. So it is one uh, as an introduction to cultural orientation for trainers and other who deliver orientation, or as a brief and or as a brief overview of the overseas through domestic cultural orientation continuum for service providers and community members. We film footage for the video in various locations around the country and also spent a few weeks uh, with um, RSC Africa filming various classes in different locations that um, RSC Africa delivers uh, orientation in. The runtime for the video is um, 38 minutes, and it has different sections that cover topics such as needs assessment in CO, planning uh, for a CO uh, session class or program, uh, setting up training space, uh, CO methods, and there is uh, footage and illustration of a variety of methods used in um, CO delivery. It touches upon basic ESL in CO, then um, the use of materials such as posters, etc., uh, linking overseas and domestic CO, one-on-one -on -one orientation, the use of interns and volunteers in orientation, challenges and strategies, and assessment. And the, what you see on your screen is a screen grab of the video that can be played from uh, the Course Center website and um, is also available on, um, on YouTube. Uh, for both of these resources, we will be disseminating uh, hard copies to um, resettlement agencies and RSCs in, in the coming weeks, and I will be um, emailing uh, resettlement agencies and RCs with uh, more information on that in the coming days. So speaking of resources, I just want to highlight in addition to um, some of the ones that uh, were mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, including the RMPCO curriculum, Making Your Way, uh, the one we're talking about today, and the, the ones that um, most of you are familiar with, such as the, the refugee backgrounders, we um, several months ago 
did one on Syria and updated uh, the one on refugees from the DRC. Uh, another um, new resource uh, that um, some of you may not be familiar with, and I, and I wanted to mention it again, is um, a refugee orientation and integration video game uh, that we um, finalized uh, late last year and we're about to issue an updated version this week. It is called Choosing My Way and it presents players with the different scenarios that come up in resettlement and people work through, through those choices and uh, are presented with certain consequences, additional choices, um, etc. It is designed for refugees with um, some English proficiency, but does not does not require high levels of, of English uh, proficiency. Um, so we we do hope that that many of you use that um, that tool as well. So before we um, go to the question and answer uh, uh, part, um, I want to uh, mention that as many of you have heard. Um, Cal will no longer be the CO technical assistance provider as of March 1. IRC is the new CO technical assistance provider starting in March. So please direct all CO technical assistance questions and requests to IRC starting March 1. Regarding all of the resources, IRC uh, will communicate about the site that they are putting up where um, uh, many of these resources will be um, uh, posted and will continue to be available to you, the PRM funded resources. Um, for um, convenience of transition, Cal will also continue to keep the course center up uh, for um, a period of time and, and that side includes these resources but also other resources that were, that were um, uh, produced through, um, through other funding streams. So before we, uh, we wrap up with the q and I, I want on behalf of the Core Center team at Cal to thank all of you for many years of collegial and, and productive partnership and we we'll look forward to interacting with many of you in a different capacity going forward. Okay, and now we welcome your questions. Please write any questions you may have into the question box and we will do our best to answer them. Okay, we are taking a look at the questions now and we'll begin to answer them in a moment. Thank you for your patience. So there are some uh, folks who are saying that they are conducting orientation, but they are not a resettlement agency, and they um, have questions about uh, obtaining copies of the book. So if you don't mind, just contact Core Center at, at cal.org, and we can answer we can answer that question. Um, and also, just to remind everyone that the the full PDFs uh, are online uh, currently on the Core Center website, and then and continuing on on the um, IRC website. Uh, a great question here that, that we have been hearing quite a bit lately and that is if there are specific orientation resources for special immigrant visa recipients. Uh, we have not developed specific resources for um, SIVs and as many of you may know um, in terms of uh, the, the type of process that um, SIV uh, um, migrants go through um, overseas that do not actually uh, interact um, and do not have access to customary um, USRP cultural orientation. So the cultural orientation programs that work with 
with um, um, refugees other than SIVs do not actually have an opportunity to provide information uh, uh, to those refugees outside of any electronically provided um, information that, that um, uh, some RICs are able to do through, through partnerships with consulates, embassies, etc. So um, I am sure that once the, the work plan for uh, COTA is formulated going forward that there will be more conversations and more information about SIV CO because it is um, most definitely uh, a gap and a need that that is being um, verbalized by service providers. Um, another question has to do with whether the session is being recorded. Yes, the session is being recorded and uh, the recording of the webinar uh, including the PowerPoint will be posted um, on um, on our website and and will also be available on the IRC website after after next week. Um, I'll also add that there was a question about um, about working with multiple interpreters, and um, there is a section in the TOT guide that addresses um, some tips and tools when working with interpreters and. Um, common challenges and, and how to address those. Um, so there's a question here on tools for assessing an existing CO program. Uh, please sign up and join us for the webinar on CO assessment on Thursday. I know that this, um, I, I'm, I suspect that this question may not have to do exclusive, exclusively with assessing outcomes and learning in CO, but a broader issue of, um, um, of assessment. But please join us on Thursday and we will be discussing uh, assessment broadly and specifically for RMPC orientation on um, on um, Thursday. There's a question about increasing um, class attendance that has come through. Um, and I will also add that there is a section in the TOT manual specifically on, um, you know, tailoring your, your classes to the groups and in an effort to increase class attendance. There are a number of strategies that are provided within the TOT manual. One of them is, you know, developing your needs assessment to ensure that the sessions may meet the needs of participants. Another great idea is to, you know, make sure that the, the sessions are interesting um, and, you know, uh, um, including adequate breaks and things along those lines. Um, so I do encourage you to take a look at that section of the TOT guide. I see a, a question about um, adapting activities for participants with um, higher education levels or, um, you know, a higher understanding of, of cultural needs and things along those lines. Um, there is a section within the TOT guide that addresses um, meeting the needs of diver diverse groups of individuals, and one of the sections is specifically on um, addressing the needs of um, clients with um, higher education levels or higher levels of English or things along those lines. To balance that out, of course, we also have a section on meeting the needs of participants who might have lower education um, backgrounds or, um, you know, might not be literate or are not familiar with formal education methods. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that section of the TOT guide. Thank you. Another question is about um, uh, structuring and designing um, a, a CO program, and it asks, in your experience, which is more beneficial, dividing orientation topics and delivering them in different days, or delivering entire topics in one day? Um, and I would say there isn't uh, a straightforward answer to that. It really depends on what the, the entirety of, of your CO program and CO curriculum looks like, um, how, uh, what one topic means in terms of the length of time you are spending on that, for example, but also um, many other considerations such as what types of logistical um, issues you are dealing with, availability of space, availability of interpreters, 
um, you know, transportation, for scheduling with, with refugees in other ways, um, etc. But one thing that, that always um, holds true is that um, you want to not have too long of a day or not too long of a time spent on one topic. Um, and also to always mix it up in terms of activities and the types of things you are doing to, to um, work with, um, with clients and, and students on, on that topic to, to maximize learning. So there's a question that's come through about making your way, the um, orientation curriculum for the RMP period, um, and how long it takes to deliver it. The, the making your way curriculum was developed with a, what we've called the basics lesson for each of the topics, which is divided each, each, each chapter um, focuses on a specific topic. So there's a basics lesson for each of the topics. Um, <clears throat> we encourage you to start off using those. Um, especially if you're not as comfortable with um, more interactive orientation sessions. And the entirety of the basics runs about five hours. And then what we encourage um, those delivery and training to do is to, to think about the basics and how it addresses the needs of participants and greater interests or issues that may come up with your group and add in additional lessons um, as, as needed. Um, and the next question uh, has to do with the use of interpreters in orientation. And um, the person is asking, what if we don't have interpreters for each language group? Um, it really, there are a variety um, of orientation models that are being used um, in um, RMPC orientation um, in particular. Um, and obviously, the first consideration is that you want that the content that you are presenting, knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are part of your CO program to be accessible to your participants. Um, if you have participants with some level of English, uh, we have seen examples of programs using English with lots of supports of, of visuals and follow-up uh, without interpreters. Uh, but when uh, your participants do not have any English or very limited English, um, it is always recommended that you have interpretation in the appropriate language. It is very, very challenging to, uh, and I'm sure you have witnessed those examples in, in your practice, and we have certainly seen them both um, in overseas orientation and domestically, where you may have uh, five different languages uh, uh, present in the classroom. Um, it is challenging to, uh, to run uh, a classroom with uh, interpretation going on um, at the same time for, for multiple languages, but many people do figure it out and, and have people sit in circles with the interpreter, uh, have plenty of activities with translated materials. It, it can work, but it is, it is certainly a, a challenging thing. But the, the overreaching consideration always is to make the, the, the content of, of orientation as accessible as possible to your participants, both in terms of uh, the what and the how, the, the methods that, that you use. Um, so um, uh, the next question is about the um, RMPCO curriculum and the toolkit that uh, we Cal created uh, by pulling out um, uh, activities and uh, handouts, uh, case studies, etc. from the RMP curriculum. We currently have it available in Nepali and Arabic. And we um, have passed on the Burmese translation to the IRC. And um, I imagine that they will make that available. Uh, um, again, you will be hearing more about their plans as they, as they begin their work in, in March, um, and, and also about um, any plans for additional translations after, after this. Um, uh, regarding, uh, there's a question about choosing my way, the video game, and, and asking whether it's available for download. Yes, absolutely. Just go on the Course Center website. It is one of the four highlighted resources that you will see on the home page. Click on that, and, and, and we think that the instructions are, are very straightforward in terms of downloading it. It can also be uh, downloaded on, um, onto uh, phones. Yeah, 
you have a question that came through about adapting activities to the, meet the needs of refugees um, who are not literate. Um, and again, I'll refer you to the TOT guide. There are a number of useful tips and tools as well as um, methodologies that are highly recommended um, when, you, when working with refugees who are not literate and, um, or, or who are not literate in English and if you don't have translated materials. I mean, the, the biggest thing is to utilize visual activity or visuals to go along with activities and descriptions of things. Uh, but there are a lot of different, uh, a lot of different recommendations for different approaches in working with groups like this. Uh, somebody is asking where they can register for the Thursday webinar and assessment. Uh, and, and the announcement should have come through um, Resettlement Agency headquarters. If you have not seen it, please email us at core um, at cal.org and, and we can let you know how to um, register. Uh, another related question uh, uh, re regarding assessment is, um, and I will answer this quickly just in case that the person is not able to join us on Thursday, is the translations of the assessments and when those will be available. Um, there are already um, 13, I believe. Um, uh, all of the assessments for um, RMP assessments, both the, both the written and the oral, are available in um, 13 languages for, for um, um, the, the various tools uh, on our website already. So all of those should um, should be there and uh, easy to find in the assessment toolkit on on the Core Center website. Um, there is a comment that I'd like to read, um, having to do with approaches to orientation and the issue of interpreters. Um, so uh, the person says we have been able to do orientation without interpreters since they receive one in their language with an interpreter and then they come to, to us for orientation. Uh, when they come to us for orientation, we use lots of pictures and matching activities and have had a lot of success with um, this approach. Um, let me say a few words about kind of this full English immersion orientation. Um, people have been asking about that more and more um, recently and um, like all of the issues in orientation, there isn't an easy answer, but I would say successful models of that type that I've seen um, are successful in large part uh, due to very careful planning, a variety of activities and methods that I used, lots of visual supports, but also very, very robust um, support system for those refugees and kind of checks and balances and careful assessment of learning to make sure that those refugees who may be struggling a bit more to grasp the content due to it being delivered in English um, or you know, uh, predominantly through visuals with, with um, some English, um, that those refugees need to be very carefully observed and supported through subsequent meetings, uh, orientation opportunities, home visits, or whatever that, that might be. But the, um, adopting the, the approach of full English immersion and orientation without all of those very, very robust supports um, around uh, the, the client uh, can, can be uh, problematic. But it can also work when done well. Another comment is um, regarding, regarding interpreters is um, one of the participants saying, I uh, break the class into language groups to make it easier. And that, that's a very, very effective practice. There is a question about the, the video. Um, so the, the video, the, uh, the question is, what is the purpose of the video? And what way would it be effective, like a review after C orientation? This is really, this is a video for, um, one, uh, staff who deliver orientation in whatever capacity, to, which goes over some of the fundamentals on, uh, of CO, uh, CO design and, and CO practice. Uh, but then also people who've seen it have said that it can be a useful overview for others, maybe who maybe do not do orientation, but who 
uh, can benefit from understanding what um, orientation looks like. Uh, some domestic colleagues have said that, that it's been uh, useful to them in getting a better sense of what happens overseas. So I would encourage you to take a look at the video and, and see how it can be useful in your particular circumstances, uh, but it can be used in a, lot of, in a lot of different ways and you could use sections of it depending on, on what exactly uh, you are looking for. There was a question about um, the TOT guide and where it can be downloaded. Um, if you look at the screen, we have a link that um, provides access, direct access to the, the TOT resources, and the TOT guide is the first link on that page. Um, it's also um, under the Training of Trainers Toolkit um, on, on the Course Center website. There's another question about um, a checklist of, rec of very specific, like a, and the, I'm thinking like a concrete group of recommended sections um, for directors or new hires to read. Um, I definitely would suggest look, taking a look at the Getting Started Guide. Another um, set of, of uh, another short table of contents that we put together is found on page 218 of the TOT Guide, and that is the TOT workbook idea that we had come up with. And as I mentioned um, earlier in this webinar, we're also putting together a workbook doc as a sec separate document that will be available shortly. Um, so I would definitely recommend that folks start off with those two resources, the Getting Started Guide um, and taking a look at page 218. With, it's a two-page table of contents, um, and that will also apply to the TOT workbook when that's finished. Also, each um, chapter has kind of an introduction as an overview, so I think it, it, it could be useful for, I think the question is about a director or whoever it is uh, in a supervisor role who's training a new hire, uh, to take a look at some of those overview pieces together and decide together what is the most applicable depending on uh, what type of background and knowledge the person already comes into the job with, depending on the needs of your program, et cetera. Uh, but starting with the TOT guide and then with the, the uh, getting started uh, document and then from there kind of chapter overviews and, and the, the workbook. Uh, we really hope that, that you will use the workbook and different bits and pieces of it to copy, to give to staff, to use in staff training. It can be used in many different ways, either piece by piece depending on what you're doing or, or something to, for um, trainers and other staff delivering orientation to work through as they as they progress in, in their practice. Okay, um, there's another question about the choosing uh, the the video, choosing my sorry, the the, um, the video game, choosing my way and what uh, in which context we think it might be effective. So this is a very new resource and we have not really had, we did collect some feedback um, from initial users and um, what, what people communicated is that they kind of have tried it in two different contexts. One is to give the link to refugees uh, especially those who do have some English and some computer literacy uh, for kind of an add-on resource on orientation and thinking about resettlement situations and scenarios that they will be uh, facing and how to problem solve in, in those situations. So for kind of independent use by, by individuals and by clients. And the other one is uh, to use it as a part of a CO or, uh, CO or ESL class um, as a tool that maybe uh, people can work together on, a, a small group of, of um, clients uh, with or without uh, a trainer or staff member could be working through, um, through some uh, scenarios in a group and uh, perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps accompanied by, uh, by discussion. It is not unlike the RMPCO curriculum or, uh, or some of the other uh, resources. It is not a full set of um, CO messages. Uh, of basic CO messages that is in, uh, included there, uh, but it does hit home all of all of the the, the highlights of, of orientation in terms of self sufficiency, navigating housing, navigating interaction with um, 
the school system, uh, family adjustment, uh, budgeting, it does uh, cultural adjustment, it does hit on all of the key CO topics, uh, but not in a, in a fully comprehensive way. I wouldn't put people in front of the game and, and have that be their, their cultural orientation, but it can certainly be a support tool or reinforcement tool, um, or maybe to generate some more questions for discussion and exploration with, uh, with clients, either through direct use or, or classroom use or agency use, case manager use, etc. So that's all the questions we're seeing now. If you have any more, please write them. We will take a final look through the questions to make sure we have not missed anything. So somebody is asking how long they can use Cal's resources. The Cal's resources, Cal resources will remain available, uh, and we we are making those um, all of the documents uh, that that were uh, funded by PRM, including all of the ones we talked about today. Uh, available to IRC for, for posting on the new COTA website. And as I said, we will not take the website down for uh, the foreseeable future. So the resources will continue to be um, available to you. And, and the goal uh, of everybody in this transition is to make sure that, that, that uh, any disruptions to you in terms of availability of resources and technical assistance is as minimal as possible. Um, and there are a few more questions about kind of who at IRC to contact, et cetera. You will be receiving additional information um, about the, all the contacts and, 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 and um, what uh, um, the location of the new uh, COTA um, office will be and appropriate contact people and, and all of that in the, in the coming days. And as always, if, if um, there is a gap in information and, and there's something you need to know that you you um, do not know, please contact your um, agency headquarters and they should be um, up to speed with, with all of that information. Um, so a question regarding the assessment webinar on Thursday, who is it geared for? So anybody who has an interest in uh, refugee orientation assessment, this one actually will cover both overseas assessment tools and RMP. Uh, CO assessment tools, anybody who has an interest in that, either as um, a direct provider of orientation who, um, who is trying to figure out how to assess their classes or somebody who has uh, an interest or responsibility at either the local agency or headquarters level for collecting data, looking at CO outcomes, etc. So if um, CO assessment is in any way part of your work, uh, whether um, as a direct provider of orientation or somebody who has to report on orientation outcomes or, or anything, any facet of that, I think it, it will be a useful, uh, useful webinar for you. I think that is all in terms of questions. So um, Danny and I want to thank you and the rest of our team want to thank you again and hope to have many of you join us again. Um, on Thursday, and we will uh, work to make the recording and the PowerPoint available as um, soon as possible. Thanks, everyone.